Hey, what's up everybody? Let me get some lightning here. So actually about two years ago, um, I reviewed almost Cadillac's entire lineup for that year of 2016. And it turns out that me and my wife ended up buying uh, two identical CTSs. Well, they're not identical. Hers is a uh, gray or a charcoal 2015 model and mine is a, uh, a white 2016 model. And we bought them in 2016 and 2015 I don't know They're, they were used so I've already reviewed the car so if you want to check out the review on the cars uh, and, and Cadillac's lineup uh, check out the link in the description or you know some of these little deals up here so this is not necessarily a review this is more of an update video so my wife has had her 2015 model and hers is the two-wheel drive I'm actually driving it right now I'm getting ready to go to the dealership so it can get an update to the GPS and get a wash so um, so Miss Fancy here, that's what she named her car, Miss Fancy. So Miss Fancy here can be clean finally because she treats it like a, a dune buggy, basically. And um, I just wanted to give y'all an update on these cars because in some of those videos, people have asked me, hey, do you still have this car? How's it holding up after all this time and stuff like that? What people don't realize is that we bought our cars uh, one year old each. And I will advise anyone, never, ever, 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 never ever purchase a brand new vehicle that is like one of the worst financial decisions you can ever make in your entire life don't do it i cannot stress that enough so we bought ours used right and uh, we saved literally thousands of dollars uh, we paid less for our cars together than some people matter of fact we got two cars <laughs> we got two of these babies uh, for the price of one of them brand new because we bought them a year old with very, very minimum uh, mileage on them. Anyways, I've kind of digressed a little bit, but they have held up well. So when we bought hers, it had, I think, 22 or 24,000 miles on it. And now it's got, I'm looking at 42,190 on hers. And when we bought mine, it was a little bit less than a year old. And I think it had about 9,100 miles on it or something like that. And now it's probably got about, I don't know, probably 21,000 miles or something like that because we're road warriors but the cars have held up really well so I'm just gonna kind of vlog a little bit tell you about the cars and how they performed over the last couple of years and how much we still love them and uh, as a spoiler yeah we would buy them all over again if we needed to but yeah let's go for a ride to the dealership now as far as the wife's car goes um, it's the two-wheel drive and it does not have the automatic start stop feature which I think makes the transmission a little bit smoother than my car. My car definitely has a sportier ride. It's all wheel drive and it has a start stop feature. And whatever the combination between those two is, it, uh, it makes it a more sportier ride altogether. But at the baseline, it's even sportier than the already sporty ride uh, in that regard uh, for the 2016 all wheel drive auto stop start feature model <laughs> i hope that wasn't too confusing for you guys but the ride in this uh, 2015 is very very smooth still uh she's still on her same set of tires if anybody was concerned about that they are run flats and they do ride a little bit stiffer and rougher but you know you, that's something that you just kind of get used to as far as uh the features go uh the only thing that has you know really given us some trouble is the sunroof the sunroof was making this weird noise at some point and my wife didn't notice it she just hops in the car and drives and uh when i would get in here i would notice it and i was like what is that so i started searching around and i, I found out it was coming from the sunroof turns out there was a piece of the sunroof that was actually cracked and this is another lesson uh always get the uh protection plan that they offer uh, especially with a high-end luxury car man um this was probably, it would probably have been covered under the original warranty anyways because it was still under the original warranty and it was a certified pre-owned. But we purchased the additional uh, care package where you get all kinds of fancy perks and stuff and uh, they fix basically anything that's wrong with the car for the life of the loan, damn near. So we took it back into the Cadillac dealership, which I will talk about in just a moment. Uh, we took it back we took it back to the cadillac dealership and they fixed the sunroof uh, they took out the entire sunroof and put in a brand spanking new one which was really nice oh there was one more thing we had to do uh the the uh screen the screen was actually glitching out a lot it was freezing and stuff and uh the story they told us was that um uh you know these cars are made up north 
and there's not a lot of humidity there and we live in Houston so the humidity was really jacking up the glue and stuff and it just wasn't made for this kind of climate so they fixed it right away uh, it actually took about um, a, a couple of days for them to get the new they had to replace the entire uh, unit so they replaced that and it was free of charge because it was still under warranty plus we had our protection plan. So you know what, it was probably an extra 2,500 to three grand to purchase that uh, protection plan. But because we bought used um, and we saved a lot of money there, we just reinvested it back into the protection plan and we, we're always covered for everything. And you know, with luxury cars, I don't think they're built to last in the first place. So, <laughs> so it was. It's just nice to know that you know when things go wrong, Cadillac is always going to take care of us because we uh, purchased that plan. Now, going on to the dealership, since I'm headed that way, I live in Houston, and we uh, we bought our car from Sewell Cadillac uh, in Houston. And I got to tell you, man, first class A1 experience every step of the way. Our sales rep, his name is Dalton. Uh, the funny thing about, you know, buying this car from my wife, uh, it was her birthday when we got it. So we go in there and we just, on a whim almost, it was her birthday. We weren't really deciding on going to get a car for her birthday, but it just happened to be her birthday. And we were dressed in regular, um, regular workout clothes, looking kind of grimy actually. Drive up there and we we're in her little red Corolla. It was, you know, 2007 and had some wear and tear on it. We hop out and we start, you know, kicking tires and stuff. And nobody wanted to come out and talk to us. We were on the used car lot. And um, finally, this young guy comes out. This young guy, it looks like it's his first day. Turns out it is his first day. <laughs> he comes out, asked us if we need any help. And uh, we looked at a couple of cars and uh, that my wife thought she might have wanted. Then I showed her this, t this CTS. I pointed it out. She's like, okay, let me, let me get in this one. We took it for a little test drive and uh turns out she loved the car we went back inside and everybody's looking at us all crazy i'm assuming it's because you know we drove up to the cadillac dealership in this you know in this ratty little car and we were not dressed you know <laughs> to any kind of standard except for hanging out in the backyard and um yeah they it was they didn't treat us bad it's just that you know they were not expecting us to come in there and buy a car <laughs> But uh, it's, it's kind of funny because, you know, the, the guy, Dalton, he runs our credit and then he and the finance manager come back and they, it, the, Dalton was all smiles because he was, he knew he was getting ready to sell a car. But uh, the finance manager came out, he looked around the corner, he was like, hey, congratulations. He was so surprised. And uh, we ended up getting, you know, great financing on this car. And uh, we got a very, very low note, and uh, that was that. But you know, me and Dalton, we've, we've been friends ever since because months later, uh, my Escalade, I was just done repairing it because you know what, I, I do not recommend anyone buying an Escalade, uh, especially the 2007 through 2000, I think maybe 15 model until this new body style came out. I don't know what the new ones are like, but that, that, that generation, don't buy that vehicle, man. It's, it's just a trouble-friendly vehicle. Months later, when I came to buy my car, uh, La Flama Blanca, I spotted it out on the internet, and I went up there, and uh, I said, hey, Dalton, y'all still got this car? And it was there. It was sitting there waiting on me. It was it was a choice between that and a CT6. I got in a CT6, and it was just too dang big, man. It's, I'm just, <laughs> it was just too big. Uh, so the CTS, I already was familiar with driving it. I loved it. I loved the way it felt. And I was like, man, it's going to be weird having the same car as your wife. I said, well, it's a different color though, and this one is so fly. So I bought it. And that's why we have the same car. It's because <laughs> I like the car and she loves the car. And they're just they just happen to be two different colors. As far as the experience at the dealership um, with Dalton, man, it, it's been nothing but a first class experience. Uh, now, as far as maintenance and going to the service department, my man there is Austin. Now that dude. Austin is awesome, man. He, he knows his stuff. Real friendly guy. Always very respectful. And, you know, he gives me updates. Like, if we had to take our car in for something, like with her screen and the sunroof, you know, he'll call you every day and let you know what's up. Because, you know, they give you a loaner car or whatever. He called me every day and let me know what was up with the car. And with my car, um, there's been a, a few issues that I wanted to get addressed before I started really, really getting into it. I felt like the transmission was a little bit uh, jumpy or knocky. And, um, you know, they were telling me there was nothing wrong with it, but it just kept getting worse and worse. And I kept taking it up there and they were always friendly about it. But, you know, finally they took a real deep look into it and found out that I just really needed some transmission fluid or needed it changed anyways. And the car ran smooth after that. It's been running great ever since then. And, um, 
but everything else that's happened, you know, to the car, such as uh, my screen actually started peeling back because of that humidity issue. And they took care of that real quick, gave me a brand new screen. Um, I've had tires of, man, this these Houston freeways and stuff, oh man, my tires. <laughs> I've had three new tires on my car because of Houston. And uh, they've taken care of it. Oh man, the service with that, with the tires and stuff. Okay, they have run flats, so I was able to make it home safely. But at home, I was at home and I called and they send out a, they sent out this Escalade that was basically full of tires and batteries and stuff. And the dude changed my tire right there in my garage. And then uh, they'll even bring your tire back to you. Like after they've changed it at the dealer, they'll bring your old tire back to you and put it back on your car. And I don't, like I said, I don't know if that's not part of the protection plan, but I know I have the protection plan and everything I've done has been either covered by that or the existing warranty already. So I'm not really worried about anything. We purchased it for my car and hers, but basically the entire car is covered um, outside of wrecking it. If I get any curb damage on the, uh, on the wheels, uh, you know, from running up on a curb, which has happened, <laughs> they go ahead and buff that out and fix it up. And if they can't buff it out and fix it up, they just get in their wheel, man. So it always keeps the cars looking nice, man. And that way, you know, when it's time for me to trade this bad boy in, uh, you know, the next person is going to get a very well taken care of car. But as far as maintenance, man, there's been no trouble with these cars. I'm loving both of them, love driving them. Now, my wife's car, like I said earlier, she drives it like it's a doom buggy, man. She. Yeah, she don't slow down going down dips or going up hills or nothing like that. You know, she be having cups and stuff and she be eating all up in here and crumbs all over the place. She treats it like it's just a toy car, man. Like, it's, <laughs> it's an expensive luxury car, man. And she just drives it like it's still her college car. But that's all right. It's holding up real well. Uh, the interior is still very, very pristine, man. Um, this Alcantara on the doors. You know, it, it's not stained or nothing. The leather is still intact. Uh, no rips, tears, or, you know, major wear. Everything is still looking good in these cars. So one of the things I do like is that when I do come to the dealership um, to either get a wash or whatever, they have these private offices. I mean, the, the chilling area where you wait on your vehicle is really nice. Lots of TVs and couches and everything's comfortable. Coffee, cookies, all kinds of stuff. But, you know, I have, I'm a guy that needs to actually get a lot done. So I come in here to these private offices that they have. They're kind of like little glass houses where you can kind of see the rest of the world, but you're in a private area. Uh, I can come in here. They've got Wi-Fi and everything, and I can just get my work done. And I really appreciate that as part of the ownership experience because I'm a busy guy and I really don't have time to just, I mean, I could have got a loaner vehicle, but that's just more time within the commute when I can just sit here for an hour, hour and a half uh, while I wait on my vehicle, get some work done. All right, Miss Fancy is all clean. Now, as far as that update, um, it's kind of crappy. They told me that I have to um, contact or go to the third party website, the company that actually makes the GPS software. I have to actually purchase it from them and they'll send me like a USB and I plug it into here and bam, it's updated. But that's a $130 purchase. That's kind of crappy. I thought it was just gonna be some type of OTA update that they would do. Um, it doesn't make sense why this day and age, uh, I can't just download an OTA update myself, let alone have to take it to the, the dealer to do that. And then come to find out, they can't even do that. But it is what it is. I guess uh, when we, whenever we really wanna commit to updating the software um yeah we're gonna have to drop that 130 dollars but until then we'll be all right but on a better note is it just me or does your car ride smoother and just better all around when it's clean now as far as the cost of ownership um i hate to say it but i really don't feel like there really has been one i mean you got your standard stuff like uh you know gas <laughs> and registration and, and inspection but as far as oil changes, you know, we don't pay for them because we, we, I guess we pay for them up front. As long as we have that protection package, all of our oil changes are on the house as long as we take it to uh, the Cadillac dealer and they take care of everything. So as far as the cost of ownership, we really haven't had one. Uh, I guess if you're gonna need something like, uh, if you wanna change out your tires or something like that, I don't even know how, that, how much that is. I think, um, I think these run flat tires run about 240 a piece. 250 maybe even 260 on the top end but as far as replacing tires i've had three blowouts basically and uh cadillac has replaced them all in my in front of my own house <laughs> and brought me the tires back so that's been a great experience um yeah so as far as cost of maintenance and cost of ownership i really i, 
I hate to tell you, man, but it's it's been very minimal with these cars. So I'm happy in that regard. Okay, now I know this car is clean and it's running smooth and everything, but it's not mine. It is my wife's. And for some reason, even though the cars are identical, I still like mine better. <laughs> so I drove hers back up to her job. Let me make sure I'm parked straight. I drove hers back up to her job so I can do the handoff real quick and uh, get her her car because I don't want to drive this thing anymore. Oh my God, it is hot out here. Now, as I said before, hold on. My car has been sitting out in the heat all day. I don't really care for that. There's one or two differences regarding uh, a couple of features like hers does not have the auto stop and on feature and um, the Cadillac Q setup is slightly different and hers does not have the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Um, it's just an extra module they have to put in there and it costs money to do it and they just decided not to do it that way. So that's a downside to um, to the two year differences but other than that everything is exactly the same except this one's mine. Okay, now as much as I love this car, I do have my hang up and my quirks and uh, things that I think Cadillac should have done a little bit differently or just even better. So let's hop inside of the car so I can show you what I'm talking about. Now all of my quirks actually happen inside of the car. Uh, starting with, there's really no place to put your, um, your phone. <laughs> and I got a Galaxy Note 8, so it's a larger phone. Uh, there is a little secret compartment that goes in here where you can just tap it and it opens up but uh, it's, uh, it's, it fits my phone, but for some reason the wireless charging, um, it, you know, it's a slow wireless charging, and then once you put your phone in there, it's in there. Now I get it, you're not supposed to be texting and driving and stuff, but who says I'm always texting and driving? What if I just need to grab my phone real quick and pull out some directions or something, or, or you know, anything that has to do with my phone, whether it be at a stoplight or whatever, I'm slowed down by, by doing this. So I don't think this is an ideal uh, place for a phone. It's a, it was a great idea. I just think it was bad execution. Um, I just don't think it's as user friendly as it needs to be. Now, um, as far as anywhere else to store the phone, there's a little compartment here that I've actually created for myself. It's a little cheap thing I bought from Walmart. I just kind of tucked it into the side here. And that's where I drop my phone or my glasses and stuff like that when I need to put them somewhere. But yeah, they should have put something, I don't know, maybe even up here on the sunroof area. Uh, you know, some kind of place to put glasses, a dedicated space for glasses, uh, definitely a dedicated space for a phone. And my last quirk for the inside of the car is these stupid shifter pedals. This is an all wheel drive, two liter uh, turbo engine we have in here. Yeah, it's pretty quick on its feet in the car drives like it really does drive like a sports car it picks up speed freaky quick and it also hugs the road like Batman's tumbler but I just don't see the need to go into manual uh, it's well okay I can understand why you would want to go into manual you just hit that button and then you're in manual but all that all that should be here uh, this right here these paddle shifters these they're magnesium paddle shifters and uh, I just don't like them I really feel like they could have done something maybe with AC controls back here instead of utilizing this space back here for uh, the shifters maybe they could have put volume controls on the back of the steering wheel like they did on my uh, old Escalade or you know maybe AC controls back here because you know we have radio controls up here and stuff like that maybe they could have put AC right here since you know they're kind of embedded on the screen I mean it, there's a lot of redundancy here which is fine you know you need multiple ways to interface but I definitely think they could have took this off I can do without manual or at least manual here if you're going to do manual it always needs to happen on the shifter in my opinion well, as far as the rest of the car goes I am purely satisfied man it's been a great experience owning and driving this car man I, I love the way they look on the outside love the comfort and the amenities on the inside as you can see there's plenty of room in the back I'm a 240 pound grown man I'm five foot ten and I'm sitting in the back my son is uh, I think he's 5'11 but he's super slim and he fits back here just fine when we do trips and stuff. We actually just did a college trip um, looking at some colleges over the weekend and he sat in the back and rode just fine, man. So this car is a 2016 and it's 2018 as I'm doing this video and it's holding up very, very well. I've got 27,000. 317 miles wow i bought this thing at 9,000 and some change i i've been a road warrior but hey that's how we roll man if you're looking at buying one of these cars i highly suggest you buy one used because like i said it's a terrible financial decision to buy a brand new car 
but because you're getting used make sure you get a uh, certified one and and get that warranty man get that protection plan you're gonna be just fine this car is held these cars are holding up really well under the conditions we put them in and i suggest you go ahead and pick up one if that's what you're in the market for anyways before i get out of here i'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all to tap on that like button smash on that subscribe button and i'll see y'all at the next one